Hi, for this video lecture, I'm going to talk about RAM and the links uh, that is shown in your screen are my source materials. So, what is random access memory? RAM or random access memory is the internal memory of the CPU for storing data, program, and program result. It is the read write memory which stores data until the machine is working. As soon as the machine is switched off, data is erased. Access time in RAM is dependent on the uh, is dependent of the address that is each storage location inside the memory is as easy to reach as other locations and takes the same amount of time. Data in the RAM can be accessed randomly but it is very expensive. RAM is volatile meaning data stored in it is lost when we switch off the computer or if there is a power failure hence a backup an interruptible power system or UPS is often used with computers RAM is small but in terms of physical size and in amount of data it can hold RAM is of two types static RAM SRAM and dynamic RAM or DRAM. The word static indicates that the memory retains its contents as long as power is being supplied. However, data is lost when the power gets down due to volatile nature. SRAM chips use a matrix of six transistors and no capacitors. Transistors do not require power to prevent leakage, so SRAM need not be refreshed on a regular basis. There is extra space in the matrix, hence SRAM uses more chips than DRAM for the same amount of storage space, making the manufacturing cost higher. SRAM is thus used as cache memory and has very fast access. So here are some characteristics of RAM, so it's long life, need no need to refresh because it uses uh, transistor instead of capacitor. It's faster, used as cache memory, and large in size, in the physical size, and it's expensive. It requires high power consumption because uh, y you always have to power it on. The next is DRAM. DRAM, unlike SRAM, must be continually refreshed in order to maintain the data. This is done by placing the memory on a refresh circuit that rewrites the data several hundred times per second. DRAM is used for most system memory as it is cheap and small. All DRAMs are made up of memory cells which are composed of one capacitor and one transistor. Here are some characteristics of DRAM. Short data lifetime needs to be refreshed continuously, slower as compared to SRAM, used as RAM, smaller in size, less expensive, less power consumption. Okay, so uh, I found a very good, very good video in the YouTube that I have downloaded that, that I want to show it to you. Probably just the first three four minutes or even five minutes of video then afterwards uh, we can we can discuss some other things okay here's the video hello everyone in this video we're going to talk about one of the most important parts of a computer and we're going to be talking about primary memory or temporary storage and this is called RAM RAM stands for Random Access Memory. RAM is stored on the motherboard in modules that are called DIMMs. DIMM stands for Dual Inline Memory Module. A DIMM is a dual inline module because it has two independent rows of these pins, one on each side. A DIMM memory module has either 168, 184, 240, or 288 pins. And then the DIMM is installed on the motherboard in the memory slots. 
A motherboard can have a various number of memory slots. The average motherboard will have between two and four of them. In order for data or a program to run on a computer, it needs to be loaded into RAM first. So the data or program is first stored on the hard drive. Then from the hard drive, it's loaded into RAM. And once it's loaded into RAM, the CPU can now access the data or run the program. Now, a lot of times, if the memory is too low, it might not be able to hold all the data that the CPU needs. And when this happens, then some of the data has to be kept on the slower hard drive to compensate for the low memory. So instead of the data going from RAM to the CPU, it has to do extra work by going back to the hard drive. And when this happens, it slows down the computer. So to solve this problem, all you need to do is increase the amount of RAM on a computer. And by increasing the memory, more data can be loaded into the faster RAM without the need of constantly accessing the slower hard drive. And the result is a faster performing computer. So this is why a computer with more RAM performs faster than a computer with less RAM. RAM requires constant electrical power to store data. And if the power is turned off, then the data is erased. RAM also comes in different types, such as dynamic RAM or DRAM. DRAM is memory that contains capacitors. A capacitor is like a small bucket that stores electricity. And it's in these capacitors that holds the bit of information, such as a 1 or a 0, because that's how computers read data, which is 1s or zeros. And because DRAM has capacitors, they have to be refreshed with electricity constantly, because capacitors do not hold a charge for very long. They constantly leak. And this refreshing is where we get the name dynamic. The capacitors have to be dynamically refreshed often, otherwise they will forget the information that they're holding. Another type of memory is called SDRAM, which stands for Synchronous DRAM. And this type of memory is what is used today in RAM DIMMs. SDRAM also has capacitors like DRAM, but the difference between SDRAM and DRAM is basically speed. The older DRAM technology operates asynchronously with the system clock, which basically means that it runs slower than the system clock because its signals are not coordinated with it. But SDRAM runs in sync with the system clock, which is why it is faster than DRAM. All the signals are tied to the system clock for a better controlled timing. So as stated before, RAM is stored on the motherboard in modules that are called DIMMs. And these DIMMs come in different memory sizes. Today, they range anywhere from 128 megabytes to 32 gigabytes per DIMM. SDRAM is also rated at different speeds. But before we talk about the speed of RAM, we need to define some things first. Now the term 64 or 32 bit data path refers to the number of bits of data that are transferred at a time or in one clock cycle. The more bits that are transferred in one clock cycle, then the faster the computer will be. Now DIMMs have a 64 bit data path, which means that they can transfer 64 bits of data at a time. Now prior to DIMMs, there was an older RAM module called a SIM, and SIMs had a 32-bit data path, which means they can transfer data 32 bits at a time. So that's why DIMMs are faster than SIMs, because they can transfer twice the amount of data per clock cycle. Because DIMMs transfer 64 bits of data at a time, compared to SIMs, which transfer 32 bits of data at a time. The DIMMs and SIMs are actually determined by this one pins here. So this one determines how many data, parallel data can be transferred at one time. As you can see there is a fewer data that you can transfer at one time. Anyway, 
I'll stop it here but one more thing uh, one of the other things to to improve the uh, to Im to Im to improve the to improve your computer system is the addition of of uh, cache so they design a cache that that are actually part of your processor so that's why in 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 my lecture they say that these are more expensive and they these are much faster than than what is being used the material that's being used for your ram so they are uh, between your processor and your ram so if you want to to increase the speed of your or improve your the 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 operation of your processor you can also add more cache because what will happen is your processor will first look for the data in your register because that is the nearest memory location in your in your memory hierarchy and then it will go to your it will go to your uh, cache if it's not there it will go to the ram if it's not in the ram before it will go to your uh, secondary memory or hard disk or or in your USB drive so so another way of increasing the speed of your computer is increasing the size but you are actually limited to that kind of uh, arrangement because unlike RAM cache are already prefabricated pre inside the CPU so probably from the very beginning you will choose the CPU with the biggest cache but actually it really all depends on the kind of application you're going to run in your CPU even the size of the RAM uh, size of the RAM say you, you have a 16-bit RAM some people are already okay with the 16-bit RAM because all they do is just run two two application simultaneously probably you have an Excel there or Excel Word and then there's a browser but for others probably it's small because he that somebody is uh, running a lot of application that that requires more more memory look more memory like if you're going to run games or probably you're doing like Adobe and all this stuff then you, you will be needing bigger RAM so RAM is a memory location that is tempo that will temporarily hold data for your CPU to use so anyway uh, in our examples for our assembly language basically when you run your program especially if it's already in a com file normally your program is actually running on the RAM but ultimately all those data that that is loaded or that came from the RAM is loaded in your registers okay so with that uh, I hope I uh, it's a bit clearer now for you what RAM is and what's the importance of RAMs and I would like to encourage you to watch the videos this video this particular video uh, complete it how many minutes do you still have there are still like it's around 12 more it's probably seven more or seven or probably 10 more minutes to it and it's a very informative video about RAM and then it talks about the different RAMs and that's it the, the link for this is in in the first uh, if you're going to uh, rewind the first part of the video the link is there and you can just copy the link and so that you can you can watch the whole video so with that I thank you and hope to see you again in my next lecture